our Lord God Almighty cannot be likened to a man. It will be a day that Ezekiel says that they will cast their silver on the street. The gold, the money will be worthless. The precious things that you own will be worthless. And the Bible says that you will cast it on the street because it cannot save you. This lack of godly character. According to the Bible, that God is abandoning the people to forbidden passions to forbidden desires because that is a way of god expressing his wrath and judgment honor the lord jesus you will honor god the father and you will honor the holy spirit because they are three in one praise the lord and thank you so much for tuning in we want to praise the lord for all that he's doing in our lives we are looking at the things that God hates in the book of Proverbs, and we are also mandated to hate those things. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness and for your grace and for your love. We worship you, God of grace, for everything that you have done for us today. And we thank you for the word that you continue to speak to us, O God of grace. We ask you to guide us and to be our shield and our portion and speak to us, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. So we have been looking at the things that God hates so that we too can also hate those things. The one thing I like about the, the, the Lord is that he is always, he even tells you if God was an examiner, he would even cheat exams for you. He would give you the answers. And that's what God does. He does not want you to be caught off guard. And even here, he has listed to us the things that he hates and the things that he detests. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12, uh, the scripture that we have been studying. And we are going to look at uh, the third thing that God hates, which is... Uh, Hands that shed innocent blood. The hands that shed innocent blood. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The hands that shed innocent blood. So we want to look at the hands that shed innocent blood. I pray that you and I will not be found to be accomplices in shedding innocent blood. Because we probably may find ourselves shedding innocent blood without knowing. And how is that possible? Because shedding innocent blood does not mean physical death or killing somebody physically, as we shall see. We can kill people even in our thoughts, even in our hearts. That is the standard that Jesus gave us, and I want us to look at it. Now, first of all, we need to understand that uh, the sixth commandment forbids willful murder. The Bible tells us, in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 13 says, Thou shalt not kill. When God was giving the Ten Commandments, which still remains as our benchmark today uh, of holy living, of righteous living, because Jesus came to fulfill the same commandments. He did not come to do away with them. You follow the life of Jesus Christ, you will definitely uh, exemplify everything that is in the Ten Commandments. Yes. So <clears throat> the scripture tells us in, 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 in Exodus 20, verse 13 says, Thou shalt not kill. Now, here, the Bible is, of course, giving us uh, uh, directives against willful killing, you no know, unauthorized taking of one's life. But also, you see, God also prescribes the death penalty for violating his, his commandment. Hallelujah. God also stipulates that the soul that sinneth shall surely die. Praise the Lord. But we see that after the flood, God makes a covenant with Noah. And he said you no longer destroy the human race as a result of sin. And he also said that <clears throat> we should be able to follow the commandments that he gives us. Praise the Lord. But we should also note that the destruction that led to the flood 
was as a result of, of willful destruction of lives, violence. The Bible says that one of the things that made God to get disgusted with the human race was the violence, the rampant violence that was that were in those days. The whole community was full of violence. It was so much that God had decided to wipe out the entire creation because the violence was too much. Violence is what attracts God's judgment, and we must be very wary of what is happening in our surrounding today, in our, in our communities today. There's a lot of violence, and, but, but the Bible says that even in the midst of all that, there was only one man that found grace, and that was the man by the name of Noah. And that led to the preservation of life that you and I have today. Hallelujah. Now, after the flood, God makes a covenant with Noah and warns against the same thing. He warns against violence. He warns against murder. You see, God hates murder. He hates violence. He hates killing. Hallelujah. Now listen to what he says in Genesis chapter 9. This is after the flood. Verse 6, he says, Whosoever sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood also be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God gave this commandment to Moses, I mean to, to Noah. Because first of all, he destroyed the earth with the flood because of violence. And so when he brought back life through Noah and his children, he warns against violence, against murder. Hallelujah. Murder is a serious offense before God. It's a very, very serious offense before God. So God sought to safeguard the sanctity of life by restraining murder in the society because he takes life as sacred. Life of a human being is sacred before God. And so you cannot just begin to take it away in whatsoever way. He, he, he did this restraining in two ways. In, he says that the human beings are created in his image, therefore the lives should not just be taken anyhow. The second thing he said, he said that he will institute punishment, capital punishment, that every murderer shall be punished by death. Hallelujah. This is what, how serious God takes murder to be. Praise the Lord. And so that's why sometimes we find that capital punishments are actually, this, are, are, are actually given to capt offenders, to murderers. Governments give uh, capital punishment to murderers because murder is not permitted by God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, Jesus taught on the subject of murder, which I want us to delve in a little bit and go into details. He said, he taught on the subject of murder and holds us to a higher level of righteousness as, as far as murder is concerned. Now, listen to this. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 21 and 22, this is what the scripture says. You have heard that it was said by them of all, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Now, Jesus goes a little higher, and he says, But I say unto you that whosoever is angry, <laughs> I say unto you, whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Now Jesus here was teaching about righteousness. And he acknowledges the righteousness of the religious system at the time. And he said, yes, they follow the law. They don't kill physically. But they kill in their hearts. They kill through anger. The Pharisees and the scribes were people who were good at the scriptures. They knew the law. They knew the laws of Moses. They knew the laws of the prophets. They knew everything. And they tried to follow it as much. But it was not enough to change their inner the heart. It was not enough. They actually kept the rules. But it was not enough. 
They substituted the outward, you know, rituals, which we many times do today in our religious system. We substitute the inner purity for outside rituals, and we follow the outside rituals. Make sure you pray every morning. Make sure you go for a fellowship at this time on a Wednesday or whatever day, you go to the confession box for those are in religious systems, you confess to the priest, but you go back and do the same thing right at the beginning how you started it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so Jesus, Jesus here tells us that there are things that we need to take to account as far as murder is concerned, and that is anger. Anger. Because anger precedes murder. Because when you are angry with somebody, the opportunity is the one which is lacking. But if the opportunity came, you would kill that person. So you've already killed that person in your heart. So Jesus says, even at the mere fact, the, the the, the, the fact that you are angry at that person, you've already killed that person. You've already killed that person in your heart. And Jesus compares murder to anger because murder precedes, I mean, anger precedes murder. An angry man has the potential to kill. It is just an opportunity which is not available yet. So if you... There, if you, if you find yourself in this rage, you have the potential to kill. You find yourself habitually angry, habitually annoyed, you have the potential to kill. Therefore, you can exercise murder. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's just like someone who is lustful, someone who is adulterous, an adulterer will not just walk into the house of someone and commit adultery. Neither does fornication just take place with anybody, anyhow, spontaneously. No. It is an act of lust that precedes fornication and murder. And that's why Jesus said, well, if you look at a woman lustfully, you've already committed adultery in your heart. We are guilty of all these sins, but the blood of Jesus is still there to save us. When we confess our sins, the Lord is faithful. He will forgive us. He will cleanse us. He will remove everything, every sin that we commit. But we need to we need to confess. Hallelujah. So hating one's neighbor, harboring feelings and thoughts that can lead to murder is sinful. In other words, this is the meditation which you should always make sure it does not occur to you. Hallelujah. So, if you continue to have this meditation or hating somebody or being angry with somebody, your neighbor, your relatives, your workmates, you have actually killed them. You are murdering them. And the Bible says that is a sin before God. That is a serious sin before God. John, the beloved apostle, elaborated this, and he said, everyone who hates his fellow Christian is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. Hallelujah. John, 1 John chapter, 15, chapter 3, verse 15. Praise the Lord. So most of us, you, we may say that we are not guilty of of murder. But according to the Bible, uh, all of us are because none of us can say that we have never harbored hatred towards someone. We have. Every one of us, at one point or the other, you hated somebody. Some of us, we, we grew up in an environment of hatred. You were hated by everyone. You were hated by your grandmother, you are hated by your stepmother, your, your stepfather, you are hated by your siblings, you are hated by cousins, you are hated. You grew up in an environment of hatred. You see? So we also develop that heart of hatred. And therefore, 
we are guilty of murder. John likens hatred to murder because hatred is the cause of murder. And murder is the fruit of hatred. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So if the circumstances were right, you definitely will be able to take somebody's life. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says that anyone who hates his brother will not have eternal life in him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hate is like this. I will give you an example. If you have hatred, this is how it works. It works like acid. When an acid is stored in a container like this one, it keeps corroding the acid, I mean the container. The acid is in the container, but the same container is being corroded by the acid. In the long run, the acid will, I mean the container will, will lose its, its, its usefulness because of the corrosive nature of the acid. That's what anger does. That's what hatred does. So when we, we harbor hat hatred, we harbor anger in our lives, you need to be delivered from that spirit of anger. You need to be delivered from that spirit of hatred. When you hate, you will be killing yourself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So in the scriptures, there are certain sins by virtue of their gravity that a true believer cannot be involved in. And anger is one of them. Anger is one of them. The scripture tells us that we are to live without sin because we are supposed to be holy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we find ourselves in this sin unconsciously. However, when we, have, when we, when, when, when we find ourselves being involved in some of these, these are grave sins. The sin of hatred is compared to murder. The sins of sexual impurity is compared to fornication or adultery. Yeah? The sins of, in, of abandoning one's family is, con is, is, is considered to infidelity. Praise the Lord. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible says that whoever is unable to take care of his family is worse than an infidel, is worse than a believer. That means you can actually be in church, you can be a minister, but if you are unable to take care of your family, you are worse than a believer. You are worse than an atheist who doesn't believe in God whatsoever. Hallelujah. This is what the scripture is telling us. We are called to a higher level of righteousness. We are called to a level of a higher accountability. And that's why the Lord is giving us this hard message. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So even today, when I'm speaking to you like this, I'm speaking to myself. I'm examining myself. Do I find myself sometimes in a mood of rage, in a mood of hatred, you know, do I just get so angry at this careless driver that comes and, you know, splashes water on me? Or do I react spontaneously if I encounter a problem that upsets my mood? Do I take time to think? Do I hand it over to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, help me to think. Help me to walk right. Help me to say the right thing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you get angry, you know that you have the potential to kill. And the Bible compares anger, hatred to murder. And murder is the result, is the fruit of hatred and anger. Because anger and hatred precedes murder. And that's why the scripture tells us that you shall not be angry until the sun goes down on you. I think Ephesians 4, 26. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we need to be holding ourselves to a higher level of accountability before God. Praise the Lord. There are sins we cannot get ourselves involved in. Let us struggle with small, small things. You know, small, small sins as born again Christian. Let us not struggle with this. Anger is not something that you should struggle with. Immorality is not something that you should struggle with. Infidelity is not something you should struggle with. 
leading others away from God by what we do and what we say should not be our portion because these are grave sins. Hallelujah. <coughs> Excuse me. Praise the Lord. We should not be able to practice these things because we are supposed to have a higher level of righteousness than the Pharisees, than the religious leaders of Jesus' time. They had all these. They were men that were trying, like Nicodemus, like Gamaliel. They were trying. But Jesus still tells them and says, you know, you're still lacking. You need to be born again. Praise the Lord. So some of these are serious things that we find ourselves falling away from grace. And sometimes if you find yourself doing this over and over again, and yet at the beginning you had tried so much to make sure that you follow the things of God, but now you reach a point where your salvation is by name, but your actions, really you find yourself in this category of sin, please, you have fallen away and you need to recommit your life. The Bible says, I told you about apostasy. I one time preached about apostasy or backsliding. It doesn't come in one day. Backsliding is a subtle thing. It comes slowly but surely. Praise the Lord. So if you find yourself engaging in some of these things like hatred and murder, I mean hatred and anger, you're already a potential candidate for murder. You can actually murder. These abominable sins, they manifest and when they manifest, they, we are totally rejected by God. Praise the Lord. So anyone who says that they have fellowship with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is indwelling in them, you should not find yourself partaking in the sins that we are talking about today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And of course, we know that all sins are not supposed to be permitted, but you should struggle with the small ones to overcome them. Not that we are, we are going to be permitted with those sins in heaven. No, we shall not be permitted with those sins in heaven. But we have to make sure that we struggle to keep away all those sins that are keeping us away from the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, in order for you to be able to give yourself totally to the things of God and avoid anger. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So what do we do? We need to surrender to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We need to surrender to the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. We see a man that was drastically changed by the Holy Spirit uh, in the, in the name of, by the names of Peter. Let's go to that scripture in the book of Acts. And we see that we can learn from this man of God. Because the Bible tells us that this, this man who is, uh, who, is uh, who, was, who, was, who was actually a, a, a very violent guy. You know, the, the Bible says that he was, he was, he was an extrovert. He was, he was a very short-tempered guy as well. Uh, Peter. Peter was, was, was a man that would say his mind any time. But we see that the story of Peter changed after the resurrection. Hallelujah. After the resurrection, the same Peter who had tried to give the Lord Jesus a hard time, at one point even refused his feet to be washed by the Lord Jesus Christ. At one point when the Lord needed him, he denied him. Hallelujah. At one point, when they were going into the Garden of Eden, they picked a sword. The Bible doesn't tell us who had the sword. But when the soldiers came to arrest Jesus, there was a sword that was used, one of the disciples. And I suspect, this is my own opinion, I suspect it could have been Peter. He, he cut off the ear of the, of the servant of the high priest. And Jesus said, no, 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 don't do that. We don't handle that in anger. Don't handle that. He could have killed that servant. But the Bible says that this same man called Peter, after the transformation of the Holy Ghost, 
we see a different Peter. Our lives will be transformed when we begin to surrender to the Holy Ghost. When we give ourselves to the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when Jesus was leaving, he told the disciples and said, You are not going to leave this place where I am leaving you, here in Jerusalem. I am asking you to stay here and wait for the Holy Ghost to come. And the Bible says that in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost comes. Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost comes in Acts chapter 2, we, we begin to see that in chapter 3, the manifestation of the Holy Ghost changes the whole thing. The disciples who were sluggish, who were fearful, who were, who were hating, who were short-tempered, they became men and women of valor. And they fought a good fight. They did not fight with swords. They did not fight with spears. They did not use any violence, but they gave themselves to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Listen to what the Bible says about Peter. In Acts chapter 4. And as they spoke unto the people, this is Acts chapter 4, Peter and John. The priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through, the, through, the, through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which had the word believed, and the number of men was about 5,000. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas and Annas, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the Midst, they asked, By what power or by, uh, or by what name have ye done this? Then, this is what I want us to see, then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, now, Peter begins to take a different turn. Why? Because he had experienced and encountered the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has the ability to change your nature. Are you struggling with hatred? Are you struggling with anger? Surrender to the Holy Spirit. You may actually be born again. And for years you have been born again. And you are still struggling with anger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you can get delivered when you receive the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you can, you can get delivered. May the Lord see you through as you struggle with this, what we call sin. But you can have power over this sin when we surrender to the Holy Ghost. That's the only way I can see. The Holy Spirit will go in the inside and remove what a man that is usually full of anger can become the most loving because of the Holy Spirit. Peter became the most, the beloved of the apostles because of the Holy Spirit. May we surrender to the will of the Holy Spirit and he will drive away that anger. Hallelujah. He will remove that anger. Praise the Lord. We see that in the book of Acts chapter 8 and nine, the conversion of Paul, we see a man that witnessed the murder of one of the saints of God, uh, 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 Stephen. But when he encountered the Lord and was filled with the Holy Spirit, his life turned around. And he began to preach love. He began to preach the word of God in love. Praise the Lord. And this is what we need to do. We need to change we need to surrender to the Holy Spirit that our lives may be transformed. Father, we thank you. We pray that this day, as you have given us your word, I pray, Lord, that you speak to us and help us to get rid of anger. Because anger is not of you. Anger is of the devil, my Father. Lord, I pray that you will only give us the anger that hates sin. Anger against unrighteousness. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen.